So they 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 uh, they, they were spreading out. They have evidence now. The Theravada, the Hinayana people, they were more conservative. They didn't travel too much. But the Mahayana didn't have any problems. So they came here. They came as far as Afghanistan. When they come to Afghanistan, don't forget, Afghanistan and around here is where the Silk Route comes from China. And this Silk Route, goods are transported to Europe. So we have the meeting of ideas. E East meets West, meets South. So these Buddhist ideas are now going here. And places like Bamiyan, uh, uh, Afghanistan, Kazakhstan, all the stands are uh, getting uh, exposed to Buddhism already. But our story that goes back to about 250 years before the time of, the, uh, of Jesus, there was an emperor called Asoka. Asoka, uh, by the way, Asoka was a descendant of King Ajatasattu. All right? And uh, what he did was, he, in one day, uh, the story goes like that, but I don't know whether he actually did that, uh, he killed 80 of his brothers, called them all to a party, locked the doors and just slaughtered every one of them. Except one little guy escaped. Yeah? A Negro, the Negro. He escaped uh, and he became a Buddhist monk. And one day, Asoka meets him. And this guy, this little boy, preaches to Asoka. Yeah? And then Asoka realizes in one battle, the battle of Kalinga, he expanded his empire. It was one of the largest empires in the world. He was killing people. In one battle, he had killed 100,000 men, women, and children. The Kalinga War. He won the war. But when he met Nigroda, Nigroda is actually his nephew. He didn't realize that. Nigroda asks him all these things that you have done. Okay, where is he going to get you? And his own karma Riper. And he said, yes, what have I been doing? I've been killing my own people in the name of power. Where am I going to take it and go? Right? That moment he becomes a Buddhist. Right? And when he becomes a Buddhist, uh, he becomes a born-again Buddhist. But always be careful of these guys who convert to a new religion. Even if they're Buddhist. And they, Asoka is one of them. Okay? What he did was he became a champion Buddhist. <laughs> and uh, he went all out to spread Buddhism. It is said that he collected the relics of the Buddha from the eight places, brought them back, and redistributed them to 84,000 uh, all over. And apparently on the same day, they were all at the same time, they were reburied. Okay? Anyway, but we have to be very, very grateful to Asoka. Remember, I told you we have. Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, Sikhism. Only Buddhism became an export religion. Jainism is a small religion in India till today. Sikhism is only outside the country because they do Bangra. Oh, no, no. Jainism is as old as Buddhism. And it's a kind of uh, connected. Sikhism has elements of uh, Islam, an uh, idea of one God. Jains, no. Okay, so basically that's the... Uh, uh, okay. mm. <coughs> so where am I? Asoka. So where Asoka, once he began, he not only does that, yeah, uh, to his credit, he makes uh, everybody vegetarian in the palace. They have never unheard of. And he stops all forms of killing. From that extreme, he went to the other extreme. So, <laughs> all right. um, and then uh, he dug wells, etc., etc., etc. But he had this passion to spread Buddhism. So what he did, it is said that he there are inscriptions. This, how do we know this? This is not all stories told by Buddhists, invented by Buddhists. This is not so. These were all carved in rock by Asoka himself, not by Asoka himself, but he 
make people do it lah. Okay, right. Uh, uh, so uh, by Asoka saying what and what he did. Alright, and so we have that record. And he says he sent people as far as Greece, yeah, and as far as Egypt by his own writing. Huh? But for our purpose, which is important, is he sent from here, yeah, and uh, this is Pataliputra, this is where his uh, uh, capital was. He sent his son Mahinda. Uh, don't mistake this for the guy from Malacca who is living in Sydney now. <laughs> All right? This is the first Mahinda. Venerable Mahinda was his son, All right, who came down and converted the king of Sri Lanka into Buddhism. All right? Then later, he sent his daughter, uh, Sangamitta, with a branch of the Bodhi tree under which the Buddha was elected. The branch facing south. They cut the tree, the branch, took the thing, the roots came out, brought it and planted it. So, and that tree still exists in Sri Lanka today. That means the original Bodhi tree is there because it's not from the sea. It is the tree itself. It's still alive, still there in Sri Lanka. The original Bodhi tree under which the Buddha was there was alive during Asoka's time. But Asoka's wife, Sometimes wives, I tell you. Uh, she was jealous of the tree. So she cut the tree down. But actually that is uh, male chauvinist way of telling the story. But actually what happened was, she was upset. She was not a Buddhist. She was a, 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 a Hindu. And so she was afraid of Buddhism spreading at the expense of Hinduism. And she knew this tree. And Asoka was spending a lot of time at the tree. In fact, it is that you go on the pilgrimage, they believe that that original structure, the big temple inside that little bit, is built by Asoka. Okay? Anyway, but Asoka uh, uh, looked after the tree, it grew back, but it died eventually. The original tree is only in Sri Lanka. It's all part of expansion of Buddhism. Now, so Asoka spent, sends missionaries all the way here, he sent them all the way to Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka becomes completely Buddhist by 250 BCE. Okay. Now, uh, then what happens is expansion of Buddhism is actually the collapse of Buddhism in, in India. It spread so fast that it became a threat to the Hindus. It spread so fast and became so rich. That's a lesson for us here. It became so fast and so rich, the monks became lazy. The monks were more interested in dana and chanting than intellectual exercise. The Hindus, on the other hand, they developed their, their arguments and so on and so forth. By about the 7th century, yeah, when um, Bhattacharya, Sankaracharya, a uh, Hindu philosopher, challenged the Buddhists, the Buddhists were not the Buddhists lost, right? And Hinduism became powerful one more time, right? Uh, and he, and another thing about Hinduism, uh, Sankaracharya did the same thing. The greatness of Hinduism, when any other religion, there is some a threat to you, go there, cut it off, destroy it, push it away. All that you do is you push it underground. What did the Hindus do? The Hindus say, you want to be Buddhist? No problem. Come and join us. What they did was they made the Buddha into one of their gods. <laughs> so the Hindu said, hey, buy one, free one. <laughs> okay? So when they did that, what Hinduism effectively did was to embrace Buddhism and embrace it so tight that Buddhism suffocated and died. <laughs> and Buddhism would not have survived. Had it all, it would have been a small religion like Jainism had it not been for the fact that it went to China and Sri Lanka. Buddhism is just beginning to see a revival in India today. But all the time. Why? Because the Buddha became one of the Hindu gods. <laughs> and so the, 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 you know, they, they get hope. Yeah? So it went that side. Now, from Sri Lanka, it, was, it lasted. Uh, the, uh, the